End of School Days This is an extract from the novel David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Young David has finished school and is excited to step into the big, wide world of adults. He wants to be taken seriously and pretends to be a much travelled and experienced man. But does he succeed? David did not know whether he was glad or sad when his school days at Dr. Strong's had ended. He was sad because he had been popular in that little world and was also fond of the doctor. At the same time, he was glad as unclear ideas of being an independent young man, of the wonderful things that he could see and do, and the wonderful ways in which he could impress society quite excited him. He knew that his adolescent experience did not amount to much and life laid before him like a giant fairy tale which he was about to read. David had had many serious discussions with his aunt about his future. For a year or more he had tried to find a good enough answer to her oft-repeated question as to what he would like to be. He desired to pursue something that won't require her to spend too much money and he also desired to do well in whatever it turned out to be. Finally, David's aunt suggested that the glimpse of the world outside might help him to make up his mind. She said that he could visit the old part of the country again and meet Peggotty. To this suggestion, David readily agreed. His aunt continued to advise him to be a fine and upright person and to do always what was natural and wise. She said that he should always have a will of his own and act with resolution and determination. His character should be such that would not be influenced, except for good reason, by anyone or anything. And so that he may begin to rely on himself and to act for himself, he would be sent alone on his trip. David was given a generous sum of money, a portmanteau and a loving goodbye. His aunt said that if he wanted, he could stay in London for a few days. He was free to do what he wished for about a month with the only condition that he look after himself and think for himself. He was also made to promise that he would write to his aunt three times a week and tell her honestly how he was doing. In the beginning of the journey, the main object on David's mind was to appear as old as possible to the coachman and to speak in a brusque manner. Although it was a little difficult to speak like that, he still stuck to it, for he felt that it was a grown-up sort of thing. Then he went to the Golden Cross, Charing Cross, and then to an old inn in a crowded neighborhood. Nobody looked awed by him, making him painfully aware of his youth. David placed his order for dinner in his deepest voice and asked the waiter to inquire if there were any letters for him. The waiter soon came back to say that there were none, at which David pretended to look surprised. He ordered half a pint of sherry for dinner, but was only served with leftover wine. After dinner, being in a pleasant mood, he decided to go and see a play at the Covent Garden Theatre. He watched Julius Caesar and the new pantomime and found it refreshing and delightful. But the show's mixture of reality and mystery and the influence of the poetry, the lights, the music, the company, the glittering and brilliant scenery were so dazzling that when he came out to the rainy street at midnight, he felt as if he had come from a fantastic place, where he had been living an adventurous life, to a noisy, poorly lit, muddy and miserable world.